Now the SSL scanner is a part of the McAfee web gateway that intercepts encrypted pages, decrypts them, can scan them for um, compliance against policy, uh, can scan out, uh, for viruses and malware, and then we'll re-encrypt it to send it to the desktop client that's requested the page. This is similar to what I would call a man in the middle attack. It's the same way that if you was in an internet cafe or a cafe on someone's Wi-Fi, you could create a man in the middle attack so that you, you know, you're on your banking website and it's proxied through a third party server. Now, luckily, um, you would generally get a certificate error if someone did that. Um, and that's why it's going to require some additional configuration to your client PCs to use this. So why would you use this? One of the um, important things, as I said, is being able to scan for viruses and malware in encrypted pages. But also, you may remember that when uh, we were looking at the Facebook block page, so if I just bring this up at the moment, we can see we get this nice block page. However, if it was on an HTTPS, which Facebook generally is, the users don't get a nice, this has been blocked because of page. They get this page that cannot be displayed. And this is an inherent problem with all web filtering software when dealing with SSL pages. It's not able to actually decrypt it uh, to be able to put out, know exactly what the problem is. So you end up just getting this uh, nasty, nasty page. And where this also becomes a problem is when you want to use coaching or continuation pages. Uh, again, this can't work properly with SSL pages. So by using the SSL scanner, which we're going to configure in a minute, we'll be able to get greater functionality out of the system and also be able to increase security by scanning encrypted pages. Like I said, though, there is some downsides. One of the downsides is um, having to configure the client PCs with a root trusted certificate. Because McAfee is performing the decryption and re-encryption, we need to tell all the client PCs to explicitly trust the fake certificate that uh, McAfee is presenting. One of the other disadvantages is that potentially confidential information could get stored in logs. So if you've got users who do their personal banking set at lunchtime, they may be uneasy with the fact that you could potentially be storing per, uh, personal information about them in logs or even being able to capture it if you're doing TCP dumps, etc. With that in mind, when we do this, um, we have the ability to allow some pages to go directly through and not to go through the TCP, uh, sorry, through the SSL scanner. Um, and generally when I set this up, I will do things like banking sites, stuff that might have personal information for our users. This is something just to be aware of. Um, we also try and train users to check certificates to make sure that they are um, correct and who they say they are. And effectively, we're going against that with this because all the certificates are going to be generated by the gateway. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's not particularly difficult, but it is quite useful to have this background knowledge of how SSL certificates work. Right, so now we're going to uh, set this up on the McAfee gateway. So it is already um, installed as part of the de set, uh, default rules, but it's disabled. So what we need to do is just simply um, enable it. And there are a number of, uh, of rules here. So what we're effectively saying here is uh, if it equals connect, i.e. if this is an encrypted website or an SSL website. Um, if it's a, a tunneled in the tunneled host list, so this is things like if you're using a VPN session or something like that, you would um, in this uh, list, SSL host tunnel list, you would put that as a, uh, an exception in there to stop uh, the, the filter from continuing to scan uh, uh, your VPN session. Then we have what we call certificate validation. And what we do here is that we can check um, all the things that normally a browser would. So is a, the certificate that's coming from the server um, in date? Is it signed correctly? Is it on a revocation list? Um, all these kind of things that we would normally present to the user in Internet Explorer and they would get the ability to uh, continue through. Well, what we can do here is actually check them within the McAfee gateway. And if they don't meet our criteria, then what we will do is present a blocked page to the user. So at least they'll raise a help desk and um, we'll be able to investigate it. So we're kind of taking the control away from the user, uh, which is, is probably a good thing. And you can go through and tweak these, like for instance, blocking self-signed certificates. 
you know, in an ideal world, yet yeah, we would block all self-signed certificates, but I've certainly come across smaller or specialised uh, companies that require self-signed certificates. And what we've got here is the content inspection. And what we can do here is we can add um, sites into this list here to be blocked from doing the content inspection. And this is effectively where the SSL scanning happens. So if we are in the kind of flow, don't get to this point, then the actual um, decryption and presenting a fake certificate doesn't actually happen. So if we just turn this on and do nothing else, let's see what happens. When we go to our uh, lab PC, go to Facebook, we are presented with a certificate problem. And this is because these machines will not trust the certificate that's been presented by the gateway. Um, and that's good because this is, as I said, performing a man in the middle attack. And so the browsers have been set up to block anything it doesn't trust. Now, if we go into settings um, and come down to our engines, and we'll find the stuff relating to the SSL scanner. Um, down here. So, if we look at the uh, client content with CA default certificate, okay, what we've got here is it, it, there's a, a document, and I'll put the URL um, up in the video uh, on how best to set this up. You've got a couple of options. If you've got your own CA, you can create the certificate um, in your CA and import that into the McAfee gateway. And, you, and so it's signed by your CA and, and if you set up a CA correctly, all your computers will have that as a root, um, root certificate trust. And by default, all your PCs will um, already trust anything that's been generated by your CA. The other way of doing it, and I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing, is to generate the certificate within uh, the gateway and then push this out through group policy. There is a caveat to this though, that is that it's easy to push out through um, Internet Explorer, but if you are using Firefox, then it's going to be a bit more tricky because you'll have to import the certificates manually into Firefox, or as one of my colleagues has done for me, um, created a PowerShell script that copies a certificate into the right location. Now the big thing and most important thing is to make sure you don't just export the default certificate that comes with the gateway. You should always generate your own one. Um, this is to make sure that the page is at least encrypted differently to someone else who's got a, uh, a McAfee gateway. So we hit generate here and we can create um, the information for doing normal certificate stuff. Okay, and what you can also do is change the validation, validate for 10 years or 20 years. Uh, 10 years should be fine. So this is now created the certificate that um, the McAfee Gateway will use to um, sign or to re-encrypt any of the websites that it's decrypted. Okay, so now we generate it, we need to export that file, uh, the certificate from here. So we're going to export this uh, to our test PC. Sorry, uh, lab DC C dollar gate way cert. Okay, go over to our lab PC, and what we can do here is uh, MC bring in our certificates, we're going to use the computer account, trusted root authorities, certificates, all tasks import, select our certificate, the certificate was imported, now when we go to Facebook, we will see that we've got the HTTPS and now we're getting this nice clean block sign without getting a, a page cannot be displayed. If we look at the certificate, okay, what we will see here is that it is uh, been issued by Intu Lab, basically what we, uh, we set up um, 
in the McAfee gateway. And you'll find this will be the same for anything that's secure. So if we need to go to, say, um, well, even Google. Google's now SSL. See, it's issued by Into Lab. Now, what I was saying before about, say, going to Barclays, for instance. So again, this has now been issued by um, the, the gateway. And me personally, I would feel uneasy in uh, logging onto a system like this where I knew um, it's been intercepted. So what we're gonna do, if we make a note that this website here is being issued by the uh, gateway, um, by the fact that I've created a certificate into lab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to gateway Go to SSL Scanner, Content Inspection, and go to the whitelist here. And what we're going to do is uh, pick up the Barclays website, barclays.co.uk. And we're just going to check that. If I put my slashes around the right way. So if we return back to our lab box and refresh, we can now see here the certificate has uh, been issued by Barclays. Um, and in this instance, this will now no longer be going through the SSL scanner. And therefore, there's no man in the middle attack. So you wouldn't want to necessarily whitelist every kind of bank or um, financial organization. So what we could do is do it based on category. So what we're going to do is add a rule to allow us to skip SSL scanning based on category. So to do that, we're going to go to our lists um, and go under our categories. OK, we're going to create a new category and we're going to kind of call this SSL bypass. So it changes. Okay, back to our rules. We're going to um, create a new rule here. Um, sorry, I'm just going to cut and paste the naming. Keep, keep the naming the same. So we add if a web category criteria is at least in the list of bypass action is going to be to stop rule set and obviously we then need to move this up. Okay, I'm going to take the Barclays out of here. And just return to my lab server. Okay, and we can see it's gone back to the uh, gateway. Okay, so we now go back to gateway, SSL bypass, um, and let's look for our uh, finance and banking. Save that and go back to our lab box. We can now see Barclays is unaffected. And if we go to go back to Google, it's back to in lab two. You can see that West. So we've basically whitelisted all financial institutions. So this is this is my preferred thing. I feel more comfortable in making sure that this kind of information is not stored in my logs or on my servers. And I, it's minimal risk in obviously in going to these kind of uh, websites in terms of SSL scanning, whether it's necessary or not. Now, of course, it's a bit of a pain having to import that certificate on all your clients' computers. So what we need to do is uh, do this through group policy. 
Now, I don't intend to do a video entirely on group policy, but it's right, you know, it's quite simple to do. Um, if we go into our DC and uh, go into our group policy management, okay, in here we could look at our uh, group policy objects and we can go for our um, default domain policy and we're going to our preferences. Policies, sorry. Public key policies, root trust authorities, import, pick up the certificate. We've now imported that into. Uh, into group policy and as this is the default domain any computer um, on the domain want to do a GP update will automatically get that certificate and then there won't be a problem in terms of uh, accessing websites on the SSL scanner um, I can show that to prove that point if we okay so if we uh, log on to this computer uh, let's log on as So this computer's uh, never had any certificates installed on it for the gateway. So we can see that that certificate has come down via group policy because this computer has never had that certificate imported on there. So is that really that easy to push it out via group policy? Okay, so that concludes this video on SSL scanning. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.